Today's program is non-tuberculous mycobacterial lung disease, today and tomorrow. My name is Dr. Jim Donahue. I'm professor of medicine at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill in the section of pulmonary medicine. Today we're going to first start with an overview with a definition of NTM, non-tuberculous mycobacteria, mycobacteria that don't cause tuberculosis or leprosy, also known as atypical bacteria, mycobacteria other than tuberculosis, MOT, environmental mycobacteria. Well, first of all, they're ubiquitous in the environment. The heaviest concentrations are in soil and water. They're associated with biofilms that contribute to disinfectant antibiotic resistant. Many are resistant to high temperature and low pH. They're found in drinking water, household plumbing, soil, even saunas, and water systems in hospitals and in dental offices. The route of infection is unclear, but likely they are ingested, inhaled, or implanted. Diseases caused by an NTM are pulmonary disease, the most common manifestation, lymphadenitis, which is frequently found in children, skeletal disease, disseminated disease, which can be seen in immunocompromised patients, such as those with HIV. Next, we'll talk today about the epidemiology of NTM disease. The prevalence of NTM lung disease is increasing in the U.S. and worldwide. There's a combination of factors. There's a true increase in the number of infections. There's greater awareness of the importance of the disease, improved detection, culture, and diagnosis. Deaths from NTM lung disease are also on the rise. The most common species by culture characteristics in the U.S. are slow growers, for example, M. avium complex, or MAC, and M. kansasii. There are also rapid growers, like M. abscessus. These are opportunistic infections. Most people are exposed to NTM, but few develop disease. Susceptibility is increased among patients with structural lung damage, disease, or are immunosuppressed. Lung damage due to smoking, prior TB, or an NTM infection can be seen. Lung disease, such as cystic fibrosis, non-CF bronchiectasis, emphysema, and COPD is also seen. Immunosuppression, for example, HIV, malignancy, autoimmune disease, plus the treatments such as anti-TNF-alpha agents, lung or other transplant recipients are at risk. Older white women of certain body morphology, for example, thin, are at risk for unknown reasons. They also might have some spinal problems. Now, there's challenges with the diagnosis and the treatment. Since it's ubiquitous in the environment, positive cultures don't always represent infection. Also, antibiotic resistance is common. Therefore, multi-drug treatment regimens used for the treatment of NTM lung disease are lengthy and are associated with adverse events as well as significant costs. Patients may then have difficulty tolerating and adhering to treatment. Sometimes treatment may not be appropriate, particularly in patients with little or slow progression over time The eradication or cure of disease may not be possible, so other treatment goals may apply. For example, improvement in symptoms, improvement in quality of life. This is our five-minute introduction to NTM disease. We will hear in much more detail about the disease and its management in the upcoming Grand Rounds presentation.